In the last exercise, we were talking about checking for interferences. And I can do that on this model as well. So, you know, give me everything in here. And I could see where I have some interferences in here. Say, okay. What I can do to fix that is I can kind of pull that down this way and I can pull this out a little bit. And I can check it again and reanalyze everything. You know, I can come in here and select everything. Okay, I'm good. Yay. But what if I wanted to come in here and move this thing around? I have to check it every single time all over again. Instead, what I can do is I can select multiple parts, I can right click, and then I can come down here and turn on contact set. And what the contact set does is it allows the part to move like it would in real world. It actually stops when it hits something. See, boom, it hits, stops. You know, hit here and it stops. And it keeps it from having to run analyzer every single time. Now, I would still run the analyzer when I got done, make sure I didn't mess anything up. But what it does is it kind of locks it down like it would in the real world. So you can see it doing the robot. Hits and stops. So you move it, make it hit, make it stop. Now, once again, this is like adaptivity. Don't ever leave this on. You will be sorry. But play with it some. See what you can do. See, that one's grounded, so I can unground it here. And then I can bring out my arm. I can look at my constraints. I can actually suppress constraints. See, that one had a constraint there that was holding it level. And you can see what's going to happen there when I move my arm around. Does the robot and gets all funky chicken on me there. But you can see when it comes back and hits, it stops. Now this back here, I didn't have the contact solver turned on. I didn't have this as a contact set. So I let it go inverted here and you know you can get some funky stuff there if you don't have it turned on. Biggest problem with having every single part turned on is in a little bit more complex assembly than this, you're gonna get into the issue of memory and capability of your computer. So usually what I'll do is I'll ground something like that and bring that around. Maybe even ground that one. You can see it will invert on itself sometimes, but it gives you a really good idea of kind of what some of the movement is. And you can modify it and play with it and do some crazy stuff in here. Now I can truly see how this thing's going to move in the real world. This is another good example of when you want to do weights as well. If you want to look at the properties on this. So update. This says this thing is 15.822 pounds. I open up this monitor. And I can see that it's saying that this monitor is 9.921 pounds. In real life, I know that that's really 12.25. There's some steel inside this monitor. Okay. So now it's updated with the right weights. And that's still not going to affect the contact set. So Inventor is pretty smart. It allows you to do some real world testing. And I know you say, oh, you know, that doesn't look really real world. Most of the time what you'll do is you'll ground what you don't need to move and test it one joint at a time. That works good. Unground that. Check it against the next move. Make sure it's going to work. It does what I expect it to do. Looks like it's going to work. I can ground that and move on to the next section. And I can go through all these different sections and allow the contact solver to do it. You can turn that off. There's a button up here in the inspect tab next to the analyze interference. And that will basically cause this to stop working, but it'll also cause it to stop calculating. So if you have that turned on, your computer is going to do a lot of calculations. So you better have the math coprocessor and the big giant $12,000 workstation if you're going to leave that on all the time. So play with that. See what you can do. Have some fun with the contact sets. There's a lot you can do with it.